Yes, has been on in my... The All Invitational Seven. Night, so I'm definitely happy with that. I'm staying above the law and not buying alcohol for children. I yeah, I think that's a good, that's a good <laughs> thing to, to do for sure. Um, so for those of you who did not catch Sin or uh, Harlock's blurb at the beginning um, here, there is a little bit of weird circumstances going on with this group, which is causing it to be incredibly short. Um, basically. Dangle was forced to forfeit, um, and Detner uh, was forced to forfeit one of his matches. So we're playing the first match right now between uh, Detner and Ysion, and we're just waiting to load into this game. Yes, we are, and it looks like the countdown has started up, so we will be seeing some sick intros shortly. Thank you. All right, you guys are off. Why Scion versus Detner. All right, and here we are loaded onto KTV Ganymede, one of the interesting map choices that Harlock has made for this tournament. And let's go ahead and introduce the orange Zerg player in the top left corner. His name is... Detner. All right, spawning in the bottom of the map, we have our purple Zerg and dank memestress herself. It is Why Scion. All right. Thank you very much, Harlock, for those awesome introductions. And, uh, well, this game kicks off here. Uh, Jester, why don't you tell me what you know about ZVZ? Um, I know that Scion personally hates it, and it drove her to temporarily seek fashion in other games. But hopefully, hopefully we see something exciting this evening. 
Yeah, I mean, ZVZ is, de- is definitely an exciting matchup to watch and to cast, but as far as playing it, even as a Zerg player myself, I know almost nothing about what can happen here. But what I do see right off the bat is pool first for both players, which is pretty standard stuff. Uh, but Ysion actually went for, sorry, a gas first and then into a pool before hatchery. So definitely looking like she's going to try to get some aggression going on before her opponent. Absolutely, and I haven't seen this map too many times, so I'm still trying to get a feel for how this is all going to work out, although ZVZ can be very much for the matchup itself and a little less map-based. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's basically just when are those speedlings going to come in, <laughs> you know, and you, you know they're coming into your natural at some point. Uh, we already see the speed coming down here for y sign, and she's continuing to mine off of the gas geyser, so that tells me that we're most likely going to be see a, uh, most likely going to be seeing a baneling follow up, or maybe some roaches. There's a drone moving right there to make a baneling nest, so it's going to be up to Detner to uh, to get ready, and he's actually dropping a premature spine crawler here, which you know technically is is probably not always the best move but in this case it's definitely going to help him out yep it should be able to provide a little bit of defense and oh dear like detner hasn't started speed yet do you think that that's worrying uh in the case that he's going to be going up against speedlings and possibly banelings soon yes <laughs> uh definitely going to have a hard time defending uh, i guess that's what the uh the spine crawler is for i'd like to see him push out a couple more queens as well but there we go, starting speed, right on time. It's mostly just because his gas was uh, started a little bit later. But he's got a lot of links here right now to force y on back. Um, and this is actually pretty good for him for the moment. Yeah, if you get another queen or two out, maybe block the ramp or something, definitely it would help with the defense. And the, the natural is already done, already producing larva. So defense, defense possible. I, I am not the Zerg expert. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely not the Zerg expert either in, in ZVZ for sure. But um, I do think that actually if Detner uh, you know, doesn't die to anything early, he's going to be in a pretty good spot here. He's pulled off gas, so that shows that he's interested in um, getting his economy going, making some more drones. But he's got to be careful he doesn't over-drone. And as I say that, he's actually spitting out a few more lings here. So he did lose a bunch of lings right in the middle of the map, though, to that Baneling hit. And right away now, as speed kicks in, He's, uh, for Y Scion, Detner's going to have to be on his toes here and defend this early pressure. This one lone Baneling is just going to kind of close up the ramp. No, no, go go for the mineral line. Or we're going to get a Baneling versus Queen here. Uh-oh. Uh, not, not a bad defense from Detner <laughs> so far. That Spinecrawler really paying for himself, killing a lot of Lings. And speed is finished for him now with his Baneling nest finishing up soon, so... I mean, so far it's been pretty good for him, but the issue here is that y Sign has been actually droning up behind all this and has a lot more gas to spend. So if she wants to make like five or six more Banelings here, she's going to be able to do that. Yeah, man, that spine crawler, she is barely hanging on there. Yeah, exactly. And now it looks like Detner is in like full ling production. Uh, doesn't feel safe enough to make drones. And behind all this, with y Sign making all the drones, she's actually ahead by 11 right now. So now all she has to do is just defend and going to find herself in a really good situation here. Yep, the Detner is flooding the lings in. The Banelings are almost more. We're going to get a little bit of a fight here at the front. Yeah, not terrible Baneling hits uh, for, for y Sign here. In come the Detner Banes, and not doing as much damage as he really wants to. Might be able to pick off a queen, but... Nah, uh, yeah. Oh. One queen goes down, but then all the lings that he had on the offensive side of the of the map here are all dead now. Simon's got two more queens in production, and both players are choosing to make a lot more lings, so we're gonna, we're gonna see this fight go on, although it looks like Detner's actually gonna sneak out a few more drones. Yeah, I actually really like that decision from Detner because he is behind in drones for sure. And if he wants to continue to reinforce with Zerglings and that type of thing, he's going to need to get his economy up just a little bit. Uh, but it looks like y Sion now trying to contain a little bit with a nice handful of Lings. Going to pop up into the natural here and see what she can see. But Banelings are good at denying that kind of thing. Yeah, and there's definitely enough Banelings and, and the spine crawler as well as the Queens at the front. So trying to get anything other than maybe an overlord in through the back door is going to be difficult. 
Yeah, exactly. And now we see the lair coming down here for y sign with a Roach Warren. So that's going to be her tech path of choice. Um, a lot of times you'll see a Zerg player from this position move into Mutas as well. Um, that's that's an, an option. But the Roaches are going to do really well here because Detner, uh, meanwhile, uh, by the way, good cost-efficient trades here for y sign picking off Banelings with one Ling at a time. But Detner hasn't moved into Lair. He hasn't moved into any other kind of tech. And he's still pretty low on drones. So... The longer this goes on, the further and further y is going to get ahead here. So he needs to take some of these lings across the map and, and try to do some damage, but I don't think that's really going to work out for him. Yeah, he just made another round of 16 more lings, finally throws down the Roach Warren, but Cyan's going to be quite ahead in the tech. Yeah, I mean, she's almost fully saturated now on two bases, getting all four gases up and going. Looks like plus one, plus one is going to start for those Roaches as well as Roach Speed. Um, sometime soon. We're, oh, actually, never mind. Forget all that. She built a spire. So. Yeah, I feel like Dutner should maybe take some of the wings. Maybe try and poke across the map. At least kind of force Sion back home. Like I don't think you're going to get through the front door. It, it's pretty well defended here. But you know, something maybe a couple panic roaches or something. Yeah, force her to make a little bit of units, that type of thing. Um, because when you're staying back at home with all these lings and bane lings, they're, they're not really doing anything for you except for allowing your opponent to drone up you know like she she's got these lings or at least she had them outside the natural for a little while and uh with them hanging out there it was letting her know when she could stop droning and move into units so the whole time she's just been making drones now she's fully saturated on two bases and she's even buying enough time to get the spire up meanwhile still no lair coming out of detner he's making some roaches but they're going to be slow roaches and they're not going to be all that effective. With y -Sign getting a scout on what's going on now, I think she's confirming that she's in a pretty good spot. Yeah, I mean, there's only two queens. There's no anti-air beyond that. If she makes you know, a decent amount of mutas, that could get a lot of damage done, especially if it, it's not scouted and Detner has no idea it's coming. Yeah, I did see a Overlord for Detner flying around, but I don't think it got too far before it got picked off by... A queen, yeah, so he doesn't know the Spire's there. Um, and we got nine Mutas on the way, as well as a third base for y -Sion. So if the Overlord was able to spot that third base, it's possible that maybe he can put a little bit of pressure on. But even still, there's a nice amount of Roaches here, and the Mutas are now on the map. Yeah, there is one Overlord for Detner on Sion's side of the map, and unfortunately I think the Mutas flew right past it. So there goes the element of surprise, but it's still going to be a little too late, I think, to at least react so completely that, you know, defended the mutas are definitely going to get something done if <clears throat> they don't keep flying past all the things that they should shoot, like overlords. Although it looks like they might get a queen. Yeah, actually, I love that y sign was uh, focusing Banelings there with the mutas, just picking them all off. And, and Detner makes the, the only decision you can really make at this point is just F2 and move across the map and try to, try to get something done. There's a lot of links here, and if they can get on those Banelings, no, there was some already bane, already some banelings morphed in. Getting a nice surround on these roaches though might have been able to actually kill them, but oh, right in the front door, Sion left the door open, the welcome mat and everything. While the mutas are going to do quite a bit of damage back home, I mean they're taking out a spine crawler. Oh, well, they, couldn't they focus the? Well, I guess they're going to go for the uh, spores instead, but oh my god, so many mutas dying to these spores. I she lost almost every muta on the other side of the map. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought there was an angle where she would have been able to target down the hatch and not be in range of the spores. Maybe, maybe not. Well, I think uh, y -Sion didn't care too much about the mutas because she was already gearing up for a roach transition. And I really like this play as a Zerg player when you open up mutas and force a lot of spore crawlers and maybe even some hydras. And then you move across the map with like a whole crap ton of 1-1 one -one roaches with speed, um, which is what she's doing now. But Detner has some time to squeeze out some roaches, get another spine crawler here. But the thing is, with no lair and no upgrades, um, it's going to be a major uphill battle for him to defend. Yeah, it's already 23 roaches to 10 and a queen. It's not much of an army for Detner. If, if Zoe breaks the front, then uh, I, I don't see where Detner's going to be able to hang on. Yeah, there's no more Roaches in production here, and Detner calls out the GG for game number one, and that's going to be uh, that's going to be the win for Y Sion, taking a one nothing lead in this best of three series here in uh, Group F for the All Invitational Seven.
very good first game by both players. Yeah, I, I like I said before, I really like the uh, strategy that Y Sion went for opening up with the mutas. It always puts the fear of God in a Zerg player or in a Zerg opponent um, when they feel like they're behind in the muta count, so they uh, they feel like they have to defend. So down go the spores, and then most of the time a hydrogen. Of course, you do need Lair to even get that, but um, and then te they tend to overreact, and then five minute or like two or three minutes later, you come back and you just hit them in the face with roaches. They don't know what hit them, and that's just the end of the game. So. Nicely yeah, played by Y Sion. I was gonna say, trust me, I, I know my fair share of fear of God from Mutas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mutas are pretty scary in all three matchups for sure. But alright, so that's game number one in the books. We're gonna be moving into game number two right now. Why Scion versus Detoner. All right, here we are, loaded on the Fruitland for game number two. And right away, I noticed that the Orange Zerg player has yet to create a drone. He's already dropped already dropping a spawning pool so let's go ahead and introduce him the orange zerg player currently down zero to one it is detoner all right spawning on the bottom let's see left side of the map on fruitland we have our purple Zerg currently up one in this matchup. It is. Why Scion? All right, so here we go. The six pool is coming. The drones are being pulled probably a little bit early um, as they need to wait for their Zergling brothers. Um, Detner has killed me with a six pool before, uh, but that doesn't mean anything because I'm terrible at defending that kind of stuff. Um, I wonder if Ysion, with this Overlord in position, is going to actually catch a glimpse of this, and I think she's going to right now. Yeah, I'm watching her vision. Yep, there are the six wings. I imagine she probably said something along the lines of, wow, BM! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and now, the pool is down, but the drones are going to get in there nice and early. Uh, and, I don't know, maybe force some drones off the line here. The Zerglings need to catch up. This pool is going to be finished very soon here. So let's see how y Scientist decides to solve this puzzle, basically. Drones are already dancing about. There's a lot of drones here, though. There's there's more drones than there are lings and drones put together, I think, for Detner here. Already, actually, that's not a terrible position for Detner here in the mineral line, forcing all the drones off. Yeah, Sion needs to buy time for the links to pop, and there they are, so now... Now the Dance of Drones begins. <laughs> yeah, and most of the drones for Detner are not dancing, they're just standing still. Getting surrounded by Y Sion. Uh, two links left remaining for Detner, and all the drones are gone, and now... Oh, all that's... <laughs> single ling. Oh, it there was a ling. take down the spawning pool all by itself. <laughs> the little ling that... Could not, unfortunately. And that's going to do it. Detner going out in a blaze of glory. Um, trying the six pool against the Master Zerg player, y Sion, And it was dealt with masterfully. And that is going to put Detner into the... That's going to put Detner into the loser's match, um, which he did actually forfeit. So we're going to take a short break as we move into the final match of the group between y Sion and Lando. We'll be right back to you soon.
Why Scion versus Mr. Lando. All right, guys, we're back. We are loaded onto KTV Ganymede once again for game number one of the last series of the night. Let's go ahead and introduce the teal Terran player in the bottom portion of this map. He is. Mr. Lando. And spotting in the top, we have our purple Zerg. It is... Why, Scion! All right, so here we go. Thank you once again, Harlock, for the amazing introductions. And as I said before, we are back on T KTV Ganymede. You guys can uh, expect to see quite a lot of this map as it is going to be map number one for every single series we cast um, in the first group. So we're going to be seeing a lot of it. Um, but yeah, we get to cast a ZVT, which is most people's favorite matchup. And better yet, it's going to be between two master players from Team All In. Um, so it's sure to show a good, uh, or they're sure to show good games right here. This is what we've all been wanting to see tonight. Yeah, I know that this is a very popular match, a very anticipated match amongst a lot of players on this team. Both, everybody wants to see good games out of these two, and hopefully some very intense, exciting, and down to the last supply depot hidden in some small corner of the map kind of game. Yeah, we, we might see something like that. Uh, I mean, y Sign has already opened with the same build she did in game number one against Detner. I think it was a gas first into a pool um, with no expansion yet. And the thing is, with 
the Reaper only just now starting production, it's going to take Lando a little while to actually realize that Zoe's going for this type of build. I mean, the Queen might be out by the time the, the Reaper even gets across. I mean, like, most people who've spoken to Zoe in chat and discussed TVZ, they're, they're very familiar with the kind of builds that she prefers in TVZ. So, even without scouting, you almost might be able to do this one blind. That, that is true. I mean, if Lando has uh, seen the many, um, the many times Zoe has posted about her famous 7 Rush Rush build, um, he may just expect it. But the Reaper is going to be moving al along the map now and most likely get a pretty good scout, even if the Queen is there. When he sees there's no expansion, he should be making it a priority to see what she's building behind her hatchery. And this Reaper is going to get right in. The Queen is actually, well, it's facing, but he was walking away right as the Reaper came in. It's going to turn away, but I think it, yeah, it, it sees that something else is building. And I think you can reasonably assume that's not a Baneling Nest. Yeah, most likely here. He is building a bunker right away. He's building his command center on the low ground, so um, I think it's safe to say that he did not expect Ysion to just go ahead and, and do that build right off in game one. Um, he's got a couple Reapers out. They're going to be able to poke in and just keep track on things. He knows for sure it's a Roach Warren in case he didn't click on it before. And the Roaches are already out. Burrow is already over halfway done here. And without any way of uh, detecting, like with no engineering bait down, Lando's going to have to burn scans in order to fully kill off these Roaches. And that's going to be pretty tough. Yeah, and I know that Zion has said on multiple occasions one of the goals kind of of this build is to burn burn energy on your orbitals even if it does nothing else it forces scans it forces annoyance rage occasionally rage quitting yeah i mean i i don't think we'll expect a rage quit out of lando but <laughs> maybe in his brain he might be uh, or in his mind he may be raging quite a bit. The SCVs are already in are in position here to defend this bunker. Now, Widow Mine in position is going to be pretty helpful. And actually, this orbital is going to finish on the natural, so he'll be able to drop a scan if he needs to. So here we go. The Roaches are going to try to get some damage done right now. Mine getting good hit off, but the Roaches are going to burrow, heal up, and then just kind of come back for more. And there's one already in place to take the place of the natural, too, so that's, that's a scan gone right there, unless you just want to eBay creep with a turret or something. Yeah, I'd like to see a, an engineering bait go down if it's possible. But here we go. Another roach actually goes down there. And I mean, I think Lando is, is safe to stay on one base for a little bit. There's no drones. Oh, well, I just said that. There's actually a lot of drones at Zoe's Natural. Um, so this is working out pretty well for her. Losing this Overlord isn't going to be helpful. But she didn't actually lose it, so no big deal. It's nine nine health. <laughs> yeah. I'd say it's bleeding a little bit. <laughs> yeah, barely. Wow, third command center for Lando, right in Zoe's face. Um, out comes the Banshee. Cloak is not even close to being finished yet. These roaches are going to continue to burrow. And I'm not really sure, like, what the exact like like the best way of dealing with this is for Lando here. Is he just gonna? Yeah, he's gonna move the Banshee across the map. And take out a few roaches with just one scan. Yeah, it's going to clean up most of the roaches. There's still going to be at least a scan required to clear out the natural. Because the one roach is going to stay behind and be annoying. And the other one looks like it's just going to give vision here on the path. Which is actually, that's quite kind of nice. Because it's, it's, you're not really going to think to kind of look for that. So, Zion's going to be able to see the army move out. Yeah, yeah, I really like that idea. And I don't think Lando knows there's a roach burrowed under his expansion yet. Oh, there's a raven, actually. So nice choice here. Going to get that raven out. Meanwhile, where did that banshee go? Banshee went across the map, but I think it fell to the queen and spore crawler. And I guess I have to, with the raven out, I have to take that back. This, this roach is going to die. Yeah, Banshee was only able to get one kill as it did get forced back. It's pretty damaged here. And the queens know exactly where it's coming with nice overlord placement from Ysion here, so overall, I mean, it's definitely unorthodox, as some speedlings run in here, try to get a little bit of damage done, but not really getting too much done, um, but Ysion finds herself in a pretty normal situation now, with the Terran, you know, mining off his second base, third base going down for the Zerg player, Queen's getting poked by a cloaked Banshee is always annoying, 
And Banshee's actually going to get quite a bit of damage on those queens, forcing Atrian's fuse to go out. And I have to say, earlier, some of Lando's mind hits were just priceless. If that had been me playing, I would have lost my entire army, but it actually got a lot of the little bit of Zerg poking that Zion had been doing. Yeah. Widow Mines, man. <laughs> Widow Mines are um, probably one of the most hated units by most Zerg players, I would guess, um, coming out of the Terran player. But now we see Double Engineering Bay going down for Lando. He's got his third command center. He's got Triple Orbital going. His income is going to be nice and good here. Um, and we're going to start seeing a lot of bile here as the uh, fourth and fifth barracks get placed down in a natural. Um, I don't think Zoe can really... Oh, cancel on a third base, though. Really well done here from Lando. And actually, he's pulling himself right back into this game and looking like he's in a pretty good spot. Yeah, losing the third's not really a position you want to be in at this point. I know uh, Simon would have liked to have gotten that up and running, but at the very least, the creep is still going. Yeah, creep spread definitely uh, going to be kickstarting really soon here and going to be spreading across, uh, getting close to the halfway mark. I like... Was that a seeker missile in the mineral line? Oh my god. It was... Oh, this third's going to get cancelled again if this sport crawler doesn't burrow like yesterday. And it's it survives, but it's at pretty low health. And when Lando does go to make the push, that's that's going to be beneficial. Yeah, the funny thing here is um, y Science Overlord spread on the left side of the map here is pretty much perfect. But the see issue, everything. <laughs> yeah, but the issue is a lot of this pressure is coming from the right side of the map where the Overlords are not quite out there yet. I'm actually waiting for Lando to, to build a Viking to go out and start clearing some of that stuff. I've seen him do it a lot in the past, but focusing more on taking his third base here. That Roach still uh, burrowed here, and like you said before... It's getting a nice spot off on everything, so y Sion knows that the third base is floating over into position, and she knows that she's going to have to start getting some pressure on that, because once Terran gets comfortable on three bases, it's going to be really hard. I mean, Lando is already ahead in supply. Um, upgrades look to be ahead for him as well. Uh, let me just double check that. Yeah, plus one, plus one going to be finishing before Zoe's. So, I mean, we need to see some, some pressure on this third base pretty soon. Yeah, um, especially for the damage that Lando's been able to do the science third as well. I mean, it's still sitting at a little over half health. But, I mean, SCVs are already mining. It's quite well saturated. Lando's in a pretty good spot. I, I like his position. Yeah, um, y Sign does have a nice amount of lings on the field. Uh, Baneling speed is finished. Mutas are going to be coming out soon, I believe. Just waiting on those. And once the mutas come out, those banshees are going to be in a lot of trouble. They're going to have to most likely stay home or just end up dying. A little bit of lings and bane lings poking in. Forcing a little bit of repositioning out of the army, but the bulk of the army is still just kind of sitting outside of Lando's third, and it's going to actually pull back. Sion's taking fourth. And yeah, there... Ooh. There was a couple Banelings that almost got the money shot here on the third base mineral line. Um, the second one, the first one got a really nice hit. The second one, though, just caught the tail end of the SCV train. And now Lando knows about the fourth base is going to be harassing that down a little bit. Yeah, and this just gives Lando time to position. Although, it looks like, yeah, you can poke kind of faint at the third. The Mutas are going to come out now and kind of chase the Banshees away. But what is, is Lando going to go for the fourth or the third? Which one, which one? We'll have to see. He's moving into position here. Looks like he's going to focus down the fourth base first, clearing some creep. He's got a massive bioforce that I don't think y Sign is really ready for. There's not enough mutas. There's not enough banelings. Um, although banelings are morphing in right now. They need to go right now before plus two, plus two finishes for Lando, though. Because once that happens, this is going to be almost impossible to stop. Yeah, good spread by Lando with both the army and with the Widow Mines. This is, this is going to be difficult. Fourth base is down now, so Lando is actually pretty happy to just sit here. He doesn't really have to push the issue too hard. And here yeah. we go. Army comes in, but the Marines are already pre-split. 
overall, it was a pretty nice engagement from Ysion, though. Most of the Marines going down. There's only a few left. And I, even with these Mutas here, going to be able to actually clean that up. But the reinforcements are coming. And they're going to force the Mutas back. And we're, we're just a few seconds away from plus two, plus two here for Lando. And then those Mutas are going to die so fast. Yeah, Kree's Fred's going to get cleared out too. This is only going to help Lando continue the parade push forward, and this this might be over at the third base. Uh, here we go. Banshees are getting damaged by these queens here. Look like one of them is going to get taken out. Lando doesn't care about Creep Spread. He's moving right into the choke here. Taking a little bit of losses, but so many medevacs are going to be really helpful. Uh, auto turrets as well from the Raven doing a good job. And uh, Wysan feeling the heat right now. Yeah, just going straight for the jugular. Not uh, as a Zerg, it's not the position you want to be in, but as a Terran, you are quite happy to just be ravaging. Yeah, uh, Lando missed a pretty good opportunity to cancel an upgrade there just uh, by killing that evil chamber, but he allows it to finish, so good guy Lando here, giving Wysan a little bit of a chance, but with the third base going down, that's going to be all it takes here to force y sign to GG. So even with the 7 Roach Rush build doing its job, I think, um, Lando was still able to come back with uh, some really awesome Banshee pressure um, and just good macro overall, I think. Yeah, definitely. If you're the template, you're feeling really good about that match, especially when you do start out feeling as behind as you do, not being able to take your natural right away, having to burn all those scans to clear out any bro roaches at your bases, you know, it just, it puts you in an uncomfortable spot and to be able to come back, recover, and win, that's, you know, that's, that's really good. Yeah, I think one of the key moments there was when Lando just dropped the third command center right in front of, uh, y -Sion's face, like, I know you can't kill me, so I might as well just drop this down now, and, uh, you know, it really helped him steamroll into the mid-game, and that's where he ended up taking it. So, well done, so I think we're gonna start trying to load into the, uh, second game here pretty soon. And I don't even know what map it's on. I've done pretty much no research. I like to be 100% surprised by these. <laughs> oh, maybe. Fairly certain the next map is probably going to be Fruitland. All right, so we got a little bit of technical problems from our, our host, Harlock. StarCraft 2 sometimes has that bug where you, you can't load into a replay. You have to actually re-log, so we're just waiting for him to do that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was a good showing from Lando. I don't think that it means that y Sion is completely out. I think she definitely has a chance to still come back and take the series. Uh, but I don't know if she has any other like special tricks up her sleeve or if she's just going to play straight up macro or if she's going to do the 7 roach rush like every single time. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know. What do you think? You, you know her better than I do. Uh, I would not put anything past her. Um, she can definitely pull out troll builds when she feels like it. If she's really feeling you know, good, she might just mono battle wings and then dance them in your face and <laughs> cry and uh, might be speaking a little too personally. <laughs> but yeah, I, I wouldn't put anything past her. She's a very, very good Zerg player. You know, yeah. Maybe trying for GM and all that good stuff. So and we'll probably get it far sooner than I ever will. Yeah, I definitely know uh, one thing about Wysine. I know she was taking a break recently from laddering, like, all the time, but uh, before that break happened, I know she was laddering all the time. Like, e every day, she was one of the only ones who had been, who had seemed like she played, like, 15, 20 games that day and really seemed on the cusp of uh, Grandmaster. Uh, another fun fact about Wysine is she's one of All In's only... Ling Bane Muta players in uh, ZVT, so we're, we're probably going to see a lot of Roach Hydra in the future in ZVT, but for now, um, we're, we're going to get lucky and we're going to be able to see some some nice Ling Bane Muta coming out of y -Sion. I She's one of the only people who can actually do it. Yeah, I know that a lot of our other Zerg players definitely favor the Roach Hydra matchup, which is nice to practice for the times that you, know, you do see it, but a lot of what you see in ladder is Ling Bing, Ling Muta, so she's definitely a tremendous asset to the team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I have to say that I think technically Ling Bing, Muta is better than Roach Hydra because that's all the pros do. You don't really see pros going for Roach Hydra, and I'm sure there's a reason for that. Um, you know, I'm not good enough to know the exact reason, except that 3-3 bio just totally shreds Roach Hydra, so um, Ling Bing, Muta is definitely 
the way to get cost efficient trades against a uh, big Terran army. So I think that's why we like to do this kind of thing. I'm being told to accept the replay, but or accept it, but I don't see it. Hmm. Fun Starcraft situations. There we go. Got it. All right. We're all ready to go. So, guys, we'll see you on the other side as we load into Fruitland. I called it. <laughs> Why, Scion versus Mr. Lando. Okay, so here we are loaded onto Fruitland for game number two. We are going to get this started by introducing in the bottom left corner the Teal Terran player currently up 1 0 with some nice macro play and nice 7 Roach Rush defense. He is. Mr. Lando. All right, spawning in the top right, we have our purple Zerg. Will she seven rush rush again, or will she bring it back to tie up the series? It is. Why, Scion? All right, so here we go. Game number two underway. There's no spawning pool yet for Zoe. We're going to find out in just a couple seconds if she's going to drop that down first or if she's going to move to take a natural. Looks like she's going to take the natural, so. Yeah, it looked like she was asking where the lemon party was. <laughs> yeah, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about the uh, lemons on this map and how you can steal them, but I actually have no idea what that means. I've never seen it happen before. I don't know what happens when you steal the lemons. I don't know if it's a benefit or what, but hopefully someone does it so I can learn. Um, I believe it gives you like 500 minerals. It's basically a giant instant mule. Like if you take units over to it and kill it. I mean, I hope you're talking about the lemon in the game. The other yes. kind of lemon <laughs> thing you might have to Google. <laughs> I will not Google. I promise you I will not Google. I was trying to direct the conversation away from that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, okay, so gas going down here for y Um So that indicates usually early speed, usually into a type of, you know, Ling Bane defense of Hellbats and stuff like that. We'll see if uh, Lando wants to do that. He is kind of, uh, I'd say, famous for the amount of games he likes to play with Hellions. Like, he definitely uses a lot of Hellions against their, at least he did in the past. I'm not sure if he's working on a new style, but if I was playing against him right now, I would definitely be expecting Hellions. And yeah, lots of them. this is, I mean, looking at the position of the thirds, this is a good Hellbat map. So, I mean, Scion might take that into account, knowing that the thirds are a little further away, and therefore easily batted down by Hellions, but we will see. Reaper coming in, and he's saying, alright, good, this looks like an absolutely normal game. Um, at least so far. And going to just get a nice scout off. Is he making a second one? No, he's actually just getting the factory in position. Oh, yeah, he got a second Reaper. He's uh, keeping it at home for, for defense. But as I say that, he decides to move it across the map to help pick off some Lings. Yep, I and mean, now that you know that the Lings haven't kind of snuck out and around your Reaper and are on the Zerg side of the map, you can bring the second Reaper over, try and get a little more extra poke damage done. Yeah, and now so, we're just going to be waiting for the Hellions to come out. And this type of play coming out of Lando, it's very standard, but it, it's good play too. It's kind of like a skill check against a Zerg player. And yes, by the way, I did notice the Roach Warren going down very early here for y Sion, so I thought we would see standard play, but I guess I guess not yet. Um, but this type of Reaper um, harassment is really good against a Zerg player who struggles with any sort of multitasking. But as you can see here, Wysion not struggling with the multitasking, keeping her minerals down while she defends and even kills one of the Reapers. Might even get a second kill here. 
Queen moving in position to try to pick yeah, this off. This Reaper is surrounded. Is. There he goes. The Reapers did get into the base, though, which is a turn should be pretty difficult to do. So the fact that they got in, they got off the scout, they saw the Roach War, and I mean, they they paid for themselves. If you yeah. if you value information. Yeah, for sure. The one thing I wish they saw, if I'm Lando, is what those eggs popped into, because I'm pretty sure uh, the last Reaper died before all the roaches spawned, and now he might not know 100% that all these roaches are coming. Although, look, given his building placement here, he's going to be doing his best to get ready for that type of thing. With a third command center going down, once again, he's making this defense a little bit harder on himself, but if he does defend it, he's going to be in a great position moving into the mid-game. Yeah, this third is, or this natural is definitely going to have to be lifted off. You know, behind this, Sion has gone for a lair. Just on two bases, no third base yet. And she's just focusing on droning up here, which is a good idea. Forcing Lando to stay on one base and not feel like he can move out. Uh, meanwhile, you drone up and, and get ready for your next transition. Spore Crawler's going down uh, preemptively here, which is a smart move. Yeah, definitely after seeing the, uh, the swap on the starport. No burrow this time, but the roaches are just going to kind of dance back and forth. Yeah, so I wonder what the lair is for, because I feel like mutas are going to be pretty expensive, especially given the fact that she's only on one gas right now. And now she's getting all the gases. Hmm. Uh, knowing her could be anything. <laughs> At this point, I mean, she might even throw down a nidus, nidus if she felt like it. Nidus might actually be a pretty decent play here, but it does turn into a Spire. Um, she's getting all the gases now. Still no signs of uh, trying to get a third base yet, so that's pretty interesting. But she's got tons of drones here for her two, ba uh, her two base play. And now that the Banshee's out, it's going to force the Roaches to kind of go somewhere else. But they're still in a pretty good position to find any move out from Lando, so... Zoe will get to react whenever she needs to. And behind this, Lando is only seeing, or doesn't have a whole lot of vision on what Scion has been up to behind this. Knows the, he knows that the roaches are still around, but right now it's just trying to recover at the natural. So this spire could come at a complete surprise, and there's no no turrets up yet. Ebays are only just going down now. Third base going down for Wysai. There's a drop moving out for Lando with four Widow Mines in it. I really like this. It's going to give him a chance to scout out the third base if he wants to move the medevac that way, but also um, try to get a little bit of damage. The issue is those preemptive scores before are uh, going to be key here for Scion, and we're going to see Lando decide not to actually pursue that. And just as I said it, he picks up three more Mines and going to try to get some damage done. Yeah, but there's Lings and Spores already in position. The drone's pre-pulled. And... We'll see how much damage this actually gets done. Oh, not very much at all. No. Yeah. And it's gonna get cleaned up immediately, too. This Banshee is gonna poke away at the third, but the Mutas are already out, and it looks like all the mines have been cleaned up, so... Science just gonna go back to mining. Yeah, overall, that was a really good defense uh, coming out of y -Sign. Lando did almost no damage with those Widow Mines and lost them all, as well as the Medivac, too. And it does look like, oh, Widow Mine is going to get off a pretty nice shot on the Mutas. Going to pick off one of them. But once this Cloak Energy runs out, or once this Overseer gets over here, which is probably what's going to happen first, this uh, Cloak Banshee is going to have to get on out of there. I think it's going to get taken out. And the number for it puts a lot of work on this third base. Third base sitting at less than half health. It's going to make any kind of later push Lando does in the next little while you know, effective, especially if he can get even more damage on the third and maybe even take it down entirely. Yeah, for sure, and that's always something to keep in mind as a third player, too. You can't necessarily leave your third base undefended now because it's just going to take like five seconds to kill it. Um, there is a Ling push coming over for the third base of Lando, but it's not really big enough to do too much damage. Um, once again, Lando is nice and ahead in upgrades. He's got combat shields finishing up, plus one, plus one going to be finishing soon as well. But there's a lot of mutas here. Yeah, and the Ling's cleaned up you know, a little bit of a lot of the outside forces that were kind of 
transferring in between the bases, and it looks like Cyan's looking to put on the pressure on Lando's side of the map, probably adjusting from the last game, and not going to give Lando time to, to get back in the game, or at least not as much time. Yeah, it's a really good idea from my side because, um, again, being behind in upgrades again here, this is her window to uh, take a, a cost-efficient trade. Lando already almost mined out of his main here. Something I don't know why these links don't just go and get the fruit. They're just kind of chilling. I would have figured fruit, free fruit. I, I don't know how to take the fruit, so maybe <laughs> Sion doesn't know either. It's uh, totally possible. Nice little Muta ball over here harassing that gas geyser. Yeah, Mutas are going to come in and be annoying. It's going to probably force, or at least it's going to force some SE pulls, an extra turret. The gas is going to need to be rebuilt. It's it's annoying. Yeah, for sure. This Banshee is annoying as well, as it has managed to pick off a few more drones here. It's almost out of cloak energy, but maybe we'll get a queen. Now, transfuse goes off. And the Banshee finally dies, so now y can can um, just feel a little bit better about the whole situation at her third base. And things are looking good. The creep spread is good for y -Sion. The upgrades are kicking in now. Baneling speed just about finished. She's not too far behind Lando for plus two, plus two, so I think everything's pretty good. Just like to see a fourth base go down pretty soon and we move into the mid-game. Yeah, I like that the creeps, you know, very thoroughly connected between the bases, especially since Scion did take the base that looks to be a little further away. So it, it's, you know, there's the, the creep spread's really going to benefit her uh, the way it's set up now. And it looks like actually mutas are coming back in, kind of forcing the army back entirely, which is going to give Scion a little more room to breathe and a bit more map control. Yeah, she picked off like three reactors there too without cancels, which was really nice and really annoying for Lando to have to deal with. Um, and just for uh, you know a handful of mutas being active on the map, it's it's doing really well for her. And I mean, still no actual. Oh my God, Lando's getting the fruit. Yep, we will find out what the fruit does. But meanwhile, Lando, uh, Scion's mutas have forced a lot of extra turrets out of Lando. I'm watching this fruit like a hot... Oh, my, what? 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 No, come on. There you go. And he's just leaving it on the ground? Yep. And that's what happens. He's like, I don't know how to pick it up. What <laughs> <am> I, <laughs> okay. Oh, does the SCV have to pick it up? Yeah, the SCV's picking it up. I mean, I'm sure there's other things that we should be focusing on in this game, but this SCV is indeed this picking SCV up that lemon. Mine of lemon. So whether Lando wins or loses, he gets brownie points for picking up that lemon. You look at it, carrying the <laughs> giant lemon. <laughs> you got it. Now these mutas are needing to be careful here as the Bioforce has moved out. So even more pro from Lando, picking up the lemon and also moving across the map, forcing Scion to be defensive here and trying to cancel this fourth base. Those Widowmine shots doing some friendly fire there. And I think this sh there's not as much bio here as there really needs to be to to scare y -Sion. And she's handling this really well, moving in small handfuls of Lings and Banes and taking out the bio yeah. and forcing Widowmine shot. The, most of the mines have already gone off, so it's a lot of Marines, only a couple of Marauders here. And although, I, I would not play the Mutas in just right over the upgraded Marines. Yeah, I mean, plus two, plus two finish for that bio. And the reinforcements are real here for Lando. He's actually doing a lot of damage with this push. Not enough Banelings on the field yet, and the Mutas can't fight this without Banelings. They can't, although even if the Marines are actually, they're pretty thoroughly stimmed. Um, they might might be ODing just a little bit, but Sion needs to kind of wait for the army to regroup. And then, looks like now that it's all coming together, and the fourth base has stayed up, it's really not taking a whole lot of damage. Um, We'll have to see what Lando can do to try and break Scion here. That was a huge mine hit on those uh, mutas right there, taking lots of damage. Lando tries to seize that opportunity, but now there's a lot of lings here. Taking a lot of damage too, but the banelings are coming through. And it's a pretty close fight, but with the amount of mutas and zerglings that are here, y -Sion is going to push this back. The fourth base is going to remain up, and production is going to be just amazing for 
Y Siren here going forward now that she's on those four bases. Hive is incoming and getting some counter pressure on this third base. Lings and Muta's coming in, doing a nice amount of damage. Not necessarily game ending yet. Lando's doing a pretty good job repairing the bunker and holding on to this base right now. Yeah, oh. Taking a lot of damage on those Mutas. Basically suicided into that turret. Although, it's gonna put a little bit of pressure here on the fourth, although... Maybe the Mutas should get out here? I don't know, Scion is streaming a lot of units here at this fourth base. I'm going to try and get damage done before this planetary finishes forming, maybe forcing a cancel or even a lift off. And yeah, this fourth base might actually go down if Lando can't get any units over here to deal with the Mutas. If that fourth goes down, which it definitely will now, um, that's an excellent move coming out of y Sign, and she can just go home now knowing that she's done enough damage for now. Um, the thing is, is that plus three plus three is just about to finish, and Lando didn't lose too many units in that actual exchange, but actually looking at his supply, he is incredibly low here and really doesn't have all that much supply. Yeah, he's got a lot of gas, but he broke. Ultraless Cavern on the way, sion has got her own 3-3 three, three, three on the way, and is fully stabilized on the four bases. She can get Adrenal Glands as well. I don't think she's gotten it yet, but that's something she should think about if she's going for the Ling Ultra. Muta's coming in, trying to get a little bit more harassing. Need to be careful. There's Widow Mines around the place, turrets around the place. Don't want to just lose them all, but... Yeah, I mean, I think she's just gearing up for that death push. Once the Ultras can come out, um, with the size of Lando's army being, unfortunately, really small for him, um, I think that it's going to be pretty tough for him to defend what y Sion has in store for him. Yeah, look, more Banelings morphing in. These Mutas can continue kind of keeping control of the map. It's going to be difficult to push out and retake that fourth without basically bringing the army to babysit it. Yeah, exactly. And even then, there's only one Thor. I mean, the Thor is going to be helpful, especially with all the Marines. Like, they are 3-3, so they're nothing to sneeze at. But, like you said, Lando can't move out. Um, and meanwhile, this is giving y a time to get four Ultras out on the map, as well as her plus three, plus three to finish. And once these Ultras are in position, we're going to see what uh, y has planned for, for Lando here. And I don't think it's anything good. Yeah, no adrenal glands, but we are going to get Burrow, so maybe we'll see some Burrow Baneling hits before this is all said and done. That would be pretty sweet, actually. She knows that the main target for Lando is the fourth base, so she already has her units in position. It'd be so sick to see some Banelings burrowed over here. Oh, and the lemon's back. Lando, kill the lemon. <laughs> you need kill everything you can get. <laughs> hey, there might as well. <laughs> y Sion continuing to be patient, sending in small amounts of links to try to pop off those Widow Mines. Um, but Lando with the Burrow Micro actually almost stopped that mine from going off, but it actually did end up going off again in the end. Oh, a lot more Banelings about ready to more. Yeah, they're actually not ready yet. It's possible for some damage to get done, but Lando is worried about going in there. I think he saw the Ultras, so he knows what's going on. He is dropping the fifth base over here on the left, but the Mutas alone are going to be enough to take that out. Yeah. The mines do go off, but they did not get the targets that they need to, and we got a spore and some spines as well as the mutas over here. This base is going to be pretty well defended, and it looks like Lando's going to try and push in, but the Zerg army is here, and chunks nice of it at least are going to... Really good splits coming out of Lando. He t he killed a lot of Banelings and only lost a small amount of Marines, but no, he's not microing his Marines. He actually lost a lot to that Ultralisk. He yeah, might be able to kill it. A lot of Marines in that composition, which the Ultralisks will appreciate, but at the same time, you still want the links and Banelings there for support. Yeah, absolutely. If the Marines are stimmed and stutter-stepping, they're still going to be pretty decent against those Ultras. But the Mutas have been kept busy for a little while, but now that they're back, um, all these Widow Mines are going to die, and that's going to make things a lot harder for Lando because... Well, Mutas are not very good straight up against a bio um, Terran. As a support unit and just coming in from behind everything, they can actually do a lot of damage. This Widowmine is like dangerously close to going off on oh, some of yeah. those Mutas. 
But yeah. the Overseer is there, so they could pick it off, finish it off. And fourth base tries to go down again. Lando desperately needs to be able to mine from this, but SCVs are going to get cleaned up. Actually, the Nidus might get trapped. Yeah. Choose turrets or marines. Yeah, they're uh, trying their best to wiggle out of there. Doing a good job. Didn't lose too many, um, but did lose a couple. Lando finally able to mine off of this base over here in the bottom right corner. Yeah, he's mostly mined out of the other two bases. There's hardly anything at the natural. Third is in even worse shape. This is... He's got to keep the space alive. Yeah, that's the thing. And with y Sion being almost maxed out here, she's going to feel like she can move out. Adrenal Glance fi finally coming through here, just about halfway done. And that's going to be devastating. Because reinforcing Lings, like, as, as bad as they are against Bio in general, when they're 3-3 with Adrenal Glance and they're sort of just mopping up, they, they kill buildings and bunkers so fast that there's not much Terran can really do. Pre-splits here for y Sion are going to be pretty good in trying to defend this. Now, it does help Sion that Lando is kind of forcing the Zerg to come uphill into these Widow Mines, into the Concave, and the creep spread's just not quite there to really grant the, the vision that she'd need to really take a good engagement up this hill, but it looks like Sion's just going to swarm in now. Yeah, and I mean, those, those Ultras are really tanky here. They're soaking up a lot of damage and... There's not much Lando can do. He has to pick up and leave. Yeah, and it's still quite a heavy marine base composition, which, I mean, you'd probably want a few more marauders in this to really help with kiting back the ultras. But the mutas are going to actually get really brave and fly in here and try and solo YOLO this army. Yeah, I think if the ultras were, were brought with them, then that would have been rip Lando's entire army. But... That's okay. I mean, y Sion's in such a commanding position now that she can really, she can choose how she wants to do this. Picking off a medevac there, and, and Lando just needs, like, the miracle engagement here, like, four or five times before he can consider himself back in. I mean, I'm surprised that y Sion hasn't just expanded all over the map here, even on Lando's side at this point, because Lando can't really do anything about it. And the creep spread's finally starting to take over this hill too, which is going to make it difficult for Lando to actually step, actually pass this watchtower. Look at the creep spread. Yeah, very good, and that's definitely helpful. I mean, even if Lando wants to try to counter drop or anything at all, y going to see it. Moving into the third base here, Ultras are going to go to work, and Lando needs to respond to this once again. And yeah, he pulled his army over to protect this base, which I think is, yeah, it's floated over from the main, but... At the same time, I don't think you want to really lose the production facilities over here, and Scion's basically got these two bases at gunpoint. Oh, all the Banelings right-click on the Planetary Fortress and just take it right down. There goes Land one of Lando's only mining bases, and the Ultras are taking quite a bit of damage, but the thing is, with the economy that y Scion has, she can even sacrifice Ultras here in yeah, order to make trades. Yeah, Lumped up and stim, so the ultras just yeah they took some hits, but so did Lando's and Scion can afford to make these trades, but Lando cannot, especially now that there is only this one floated base. Yeah, he's literally mining off of one base right now, and, and he's only got eight SCVs there. A little bit of long distance mining happening. The creep spread is coming so far onto Lando's side of the map. It's just ridiculous and there's actually floating his third over to where the fourth used to be to try and get some additional income coming in but he is very very broke right now and Sion's actually just going to surround this army from both sides and that's GG Sion ties it up see that's the kind of game that we wanted to see out of these two nice long macro game um, and actually why Sion uh, making things look rather easy uh, Lando had a couple moments there where he was doing some good things but you know, Scion was able to control the game with Mutas on the map um, and then just basically macro up and get up to 3-3, get that Ultra Cavern and, uh, you know, move into that late game composition that Terrans have so many problems dealing with when it comes to Bio. So well played there, and it does tie up the series. Yeah, Scion definitely looked very in control of that game, kept the pace. You know, anytime Lando tried to move out, she was there and ready. Um, he tried to drop, she could bring the Mutas back over. Um, Definitely awkward position to be in when you're the Terran player. Yeah, for sure. So that's going to set us up for the last match of the night, which is going to be Game 3 on Roses Never Cry. So stay with us. We'll be back very shortly.
Why, Scion! Versus... Mr. Lando. Mr. Lando. And here we have, after starting out this series, down one, bringing it back to tie it up. Can she close this game out? It is our purple Zerg. Why, Scion! All right, so once again, everyone, let's give a round of applause to Harlock for putting this amazing production together. I haven't seen what it looks like. I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit comical, but also pretty awesome at the same time. And uh, really looking forward to see how it all turns out. Keep in mind, we have a very ambitious um, idea for what we want to do with this tournament. And it's going to take some practice, so give the guy a break if everything doesn't look 100% how we want it. But we'll get there soon. All right, and it looks like Sion's going for the hatch first, which I think is the first time we've seen her do this. I think she did it in game two, but she still followed it up with like a really aggressively early Roach Warren. Um, but that being said, Lando is looking like he's going to... Oh, no, he's he actually just checked for a proxy hatch outside of natural. I mean, I would too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let, let's be honest here. I, I would too. It, it's Sion, it's game three. I would definitely be looking for something strange and crazy to throw you off guard in the last match. She, she's got the uh, the J-Dog nerves. <laughs> yeah. I've seen her proxy hatch before, and, it, and when I saw it, she won the game. So I know she's not afraid to do that. Um, this map here looks kind of similar, actually, to Fruitland, in, the, in at least the way the third base goes where it's kind of far away for the Terran. It's going to be hard to defend without, you know, medevacs and, and stim marines and that type of thing. So, going to have to be careful. Yeah, well, let's take a look at this map, because I actually have not seen this one yet at all. And, wow, it's split with these really, with this bridge, plateau-looking stuff in the middle here. Yeah, it's like a high ground where I can only imagine like 75 tanks sieged up up there and making it impossible for any Zerglings. But the thing is, is that it's so wide that um, even Speedlings can get around to the, you know, the corners of the, the bridge and, and get into the other side of the map through some other way. Uh, we'll okay. see if that actually comes into play here. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a fight for the middle ground, because whether the Zerg gets the creep spread up there first, or the Terran gets the Widow Mines, it's definitely going to be a highly contested and possibly really exciting spot to watch as you get into the later stages of the game. One drone going down to the two Reaper Harass that we've seen at Orlando, but geez, the Ling Micro is really good here from uh, Wysion, forcing the Reapers to take alternate paths and stay within Queen Fire. Lando just trying to check that gas. He wants to know if anything crazy is coming super early here. But Y well, Siren actually pulled out of gas completely after getting enough for speed. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a third base go down a lot sooner than we have in the last two games um, and get Y Siren macroing up nice and early. Yeah, he's going to make a joke and say, oh, the Roach Warren's late this time. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> yeah. And there it is, that third base. But the Reaper's going to block it off, and that's really annoying. Nice play, though, from Wysion, taking the gas instead. But Lando knows that the intention is a third base now. Oh! Almost losing that Reaper. Oh, that Reaper is dancing. What's the what's the line from uh, Batman? Like the Michael Keaton one? I have no idea. No. <laughs> I'm not on my Batman game. <laughs> but we got a little bit of pressure coming at this third base. <laughs> nice reference. Uh, somebody, somebody got it. Somebody knew what I was talking about. Yeah, at least one person. Probably Zoe. 
And this third base, like, as early and as as it is and as nice as I, I like that idea, it's taking some pressure here from Lando. It's not going to die instantly, but... Ooh, nice little run by here. These Zerglings in the natural of Lando, killing a mule off and forcing the workers to leave the mineral line. Oh, so. yeah. Clearing out the natural entirely. They're going to... That's mining time loss. That's a Hellion that might be dead. That's more SCV kills. And it's actually forced all of the Hellions back. So third, Silence Third is safe for now. And oh, oh. <laughs> so close. I thought those SDVs were going to be the bane of that Hellion's existence. <laughs> they were like blocking him from escaping. But actually, they were repairing. So it was a pretty good play. Uh, no third command center for Lando just yet. He is opening up a cloak and a Banshee once again. Banshees are always uh, something that Lando likes to mess around with. And this is something that... This is kind of what I was expecting out of Lando from the start. Although, with the early Roach Warren play from y sign, it's kind of forcing him to adapt. This is the type of style that we usually see. And there is an armory about halfway done. So this is going to be that standard Hellbat Banshee push. But this Ling uh, attack here is forcing Lando to adapt. And I don't know, is he going to have to pull back? Possibly, if he can't hold the front, although, yeah, I'm glad that we finally get to see some Hellbat play in this, but Scion's definitely doing her best to keep Lando busy, you know, try and get what Hellion kills can slow down this push. Yeah, I mean, there's not as many Hellbats here as you would usually see. They're getting caught on creep as well, almost got surrounded. Banshee's gonna go down to the Queens, and the Spire's just about finished, so the Hellbats are here, but there's no Banshee support. And this, I don't think, is going to do as much damage as Lando actually intended. Yeah, the third's going to take quite a bit of damage, but these are going to get cleaned up, and there's enough queens here for transfuse. The Hellbats were cleaned up before the next round of Banshees could even get here, and there's already a Spore Crawler done, so... Yeah, and look at take a look at Lando's base. You see, like, five different buildings building right now. You can tell he was hoping to get a lot more damage done with that Hellbat push, but now he's transitioning into the mid-game, getting the third base, the NG base, and the extra barracks. Yeah, um, transitioning into the... That could have gone better phase. Maybe, yeah. With, with the armory already out, get plus one, get some tanks yeah. or something. Um, the thing is, y -Sion already has a Spire out. She's already at the tech that she wants. Baneling Speed already on the way. Upgrades are coming through. Actually, right on par with Lando this time. So, as well as y -Sion played last game, this game she's in an even better position at this point. Yeah. Engineering bays are going to have to go up. If these mutas get across the map, they're going to do quite a bit of damage because these turrets are basically your defense at this time. Maybe Using the factory to make the add-ons, there's not many marines out on the map. No widow mines to back this up, and Lando's had to spend a small fortune in turrets just in anticipation of these mutas. Yeah, it is a good thing he did though, because as uh, as expected, the mutas are going to try to fly across. This ex uh, this natural is totally undefended oh. though on the mineral line, and Y Sion finds the hole. I'm going to start picking off some SCVs here. Yeah, and some of these were already kind of at, you know, had already taken some damage from the Lings earlier. She's just picking them off one by one. How many died? The Eleven so far. Wow. That might have been, uh, you know, with some of the ones that went down early to the Speedlings, but still, overall, the harassment's been really good from Wysan. Well defending a Hellbat Banshee push. Oh, the Banshee is so lucky those mutas were not on A move because it totally would have got wrecked. Um, it's going to escape with her life. I think, I think she's trying to go get it. <laughs> she's like, Chasing I know you're down, like, hang yes. on a second. <laughs> she's actually going to find it. Yeah. Cloak lands a cloak. Wow, last second cloak right there. That was clutch. Yeah, and it found its marine friends. All right, so the third base is down now for Lando. He's going to get some mules over there. Ling spots it out immediately, though. And there's not a lot of air defense there besides the marines, but that might be enough. Yeah, and these mutas are going to fly into the main. They are going to greet this turret, but I think, actually, Is although it? Scion splits them all. <laughs> she, like, split them in half to each fight a losing battle. Yeah, split half the mutas to die to a marine pole, and the other half to, you know, I and guess, she's, take she's, a one-way trip into a turret. Yeah, she's rebuilding mutas, too, so you can tell that was actually a mistake, which is a little bit bad. But 
The thing is, with how early her third base was up, she should be ready to take a fourth base pretty soon here. Banshee is getting a little bit of harassment over here on the left side, but the Muta is going to be able to clean that up eventually. Yeah. Really enjoying Lando's use of Banshees in this series. Definitely gotten a lot of damage out of them. Taking out hatches, taking out bits of here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Um, Banshees are a lot harder to control than they look, especially when they're almost dead, which Lando's Banshees tend to be <laughs> at this point. One of them on the left goes down, but there is another one over here spotting out that fourth base. Maybe we'll shoot at it a little bit. But I think uh, Wython is in a pretty good spot, even though Lando's third base is up. He's not quite where he wants to be yet. Plus two, plus two is only halfway done. It is going to be finished before Wython, though, uh, before her 2-2. So that's going to give uh, Lando a little bit of a window to be able to get some damage done. Looks like he's going to try to come start clearing some creep before he gets ridiculous like it got in the last game. Yeah, this creep, you know, I, if I were the turn player, I would not want it to really get a commanding position over these ramps, because then it's just going to make it harder for you to take an engagement later, and Lando is definitely going to approach this fourth link at a cancel? Possibly. There's not a ton of Bane links. There are a few, enough to force him to split and stim all over the place here, and the Ling follow-up is going to be enough. And actually, these medevacs are in a lot of trouble. Oh god. Oh no. Oh, and then they're getting targeted down, too. Wow, I think I... if. I probably would have stayed there if I were Scion and then lost all my mutas and maybe died, but she's obviously the better player. Going to try to pick off some reinforcements here. Is fighting Marines with mutas, but there's enough mutas to... Yeah, there's actually enough fight. mutas to hold their own pretty well and probably get another, another medevac or two, a widow mine here or there, and more lanes come in to surround. Scion's lost the fourth, but still held this. Yeah, I, and I that's... That's the one thing that makes this kind of okay for Lando. He lost a ton of his army, but at least he took out the fourth and given himself a chance to try to pull back. If he did not take out the fourth, then that would have been absolutely terrible. Um, you know, as, as bad as it was anyway, losing all those medevacs, um, at least he got the fourth base. Yeah, so I'm going to have to regroup now. So the mutas, it looks like, kind of hesitant on whether or not they're going to go try and harass maybe... Keep keep Lando at home for a little bit of time while the four three builds and the army gets back together. Yeah, Lando's trying to f c put himself in a comfortable position where he can just macro up and get a nice huge bio army, maybe get um, you know some good banshee harassing. But Wyfine's defense has been really good, even though she lost that fourth. Um, like we said, she's still in a pretty good spot here. And Ooh, caught the building SCV. That's so annoying for Lando. Yeah. Let's see how long it takes him to move an SCV over to finish. Oh, he's already got one there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Faster than I expected, but still annoying. Definitely a bit of a nuisance. It looks like 3-3, three, three, about halfway done for Lando, so he's going to enjoy the upgrade advantage while he has it. Yeah, the hive was started pretty late for Wyzion, so... We'll see if Lando can survive long enough. These mutas got to be very careful. That's the exact opposite army you want to fight with mutas alone. So she's just trying to pick her spot here. She knows Lando is trying to put on some pressure. Like you said, this creep spread is trying to get up the ramps here, but Lando doing his best to not allow that to happen. Yeah, Lando is doing a good job of keeping it back, and the creep's going to reach going to start to retreat a little bit here and there. And Lando's in a position to take, you know, a very, very aggressive stance. We'll see. I think he wants to wait till plus three, plus three finishes so that he has the best option. These mutas are so risky. They're actually going to pick off a Thor, though. Oh, wow. That's huge. That Thor was all alone. No yeah. support. And you need that Thor to get rid of the things that kill it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. If, if it was with its bio army uh, friends, then it would have been a lot harder for Wysion to kill. Now, 3-3 is so close to being finished, but this is a ton of Zerglings and Banelings in defense. The Mutas are here as well. Lando clumped up a little bit, lost a lot more Marines than I think he really wanted to. And yeah, and this... The army is going to storm in. Lando's splits are... We've, we've seen better. And Oh, God, the Banelings just kind of came in and mopped up a lot of that. 
Yeah, and Lando gets absolutely cleaned up here. Medivacs are not even able to boost away. One stray Medivac gets caught. And this is a fight that I think Wythion can take, and he's she's forcing yeah. Lando all the way back to his planetary. Yeah, and I think this makes my... Well, that's a lot of turret. Well, actually, this... I'm not sure. I'm not going to guess. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty well defended. The Mutas do have plus two attack, so that's why those turrets died so fast. Um, and sh she was almost able to take out that planetary. I think with the follow-up attack... Um, it will definitely be able to go down. Adrenal gland started a lot earlier this time. Kiteness plating coming through. Five ultras on the way, plus three, plus three. Almost finished for Y Scion. And we're getting to that same position we were in game two where, you know, Lando's having difficulty mining from a fourth base. Now, he's doing a little bit better this time because he does have that fourth and it's mining, but it's going to be really hard to defend it once Y Scion decides to, to really go for it. And third base is actually not as well defended. There's only one turret, one bunker, and there's a lot of add-ons that can just die here. And that's going to slow down some of Lando's production. Yeah, really nice job from Wysion, realizing that the fourth was the main focus of defense for Lando. So she moves the mutas over to the third and doing a lot of damage there. Meanwhile, Lando deciding to try to put some pressure. But there are so many lings and banes and ultras here that there's no way this force can clean this up. Yeah, and... Back, back home, Lando's losing a factory, might lose another Thor, and you don't want to have to replace Thors. They're slow, they're expensive, and they're only really there to help kill the Mutos, and so when they do get killed by the Mutos... <laughs> kind of a slap in your own face. Also, when you lose a tech lab, you can't even make any more Thors. Yeah. It's, uh... These Mutos are just here picking up reinforcements, Marines, Marauders, and this is being very annoying, because Lando really w wants and needs to take this engagement here, but Sion is oh. just going to swarm in. Those Lings, they're the hand that's holding Lando in place, and he's getting absolutely destroyed. <laughs> um, that was incredibly well played from y Sion. That's like almost textbook Ling Bane Muta versus Bio right there. That was really well done. Yeah, very, very good game. That's the y Sion we were expecting to see. Um, but it was still a really good showing from Lando, and because of the way that the walkovers worked out here, um, you would think that maybe after seeing this that Lando did not make it through to the second group, but he actually will. That wasn't really the decider match, it was just like the winner's match, if you want to say that, um, you know, just for some extra entertainment for tonight. But Lando still makes it through to the second group, so we have a chance of seeing a rematch further down the line, and Lando did manage to take a game, so it's not like he can't beat y Sion. Um, so I'm really looking forward to see if we can get a rematch later on. Yeah, I, I don't know what kind of Wise Sion you were expecting, but I did not see nearly enough proxy hatches. No, I didn't, I didn't know if she was really going to be doing that on a regular basis or not, but now that she heard you say that, I can almost... Uh, she's going to say, wow, BM. Yeah, and then she's going to proxy hatch the next time you guys play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was a really good series. That's the type of games that we look forward to seeing as the tournament goes on. Um... It was a short night tonight because of the amount of walkovers, like we said, but that's it. So Group F, the uh, two players coming out are going to be Wysan in first place and Lando in second place, and they secure their spots in the following group stage. So we're not sure really what group we're going to be casting next. We're basically just waiting for them to finish up so we know, um, you know, the, first, the next group that finishes is basically the one that we're going to cast next, and we'll let you guys know what day that's actually going to be, but... Until then, I'm not sure if there's anything else we really want to say. Do you have any closing thoughts? Yeah, very good games. I, I'm glad we got to see the uh, Scion and Lando match. I know that a lot of people were looking forward to it, and it was definitely a lot of fun to cast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't know if I expected Y Scion to, to win that. I really didn't know what to expect, um, but she played really well, and if you're a Zerg player trying to learn Ling Bane Muta, definitely hit her up, because uh, she actually already helped me out quite a bit in that matchup, so... I know she's she's willing to give out the tips and show you how to do it. Lando will come back strong. He's a TVZ sniper, if you want to call him that. Um, having trouble against y -Sion, but he'll have some fun against some other Zergs later on. But uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, everyone. Uh, thank you for Harlock for putting in all the hard work and clicking all those buttons that he has to do to, to make this look nice and uh, amazing for you guys. And I'm trying to turn him into a concert pianist by the end of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well... We'll see if he can if he can do that type of thing. But yeah, uh, Group F is finished, and I think we're done. So I'm ready to say goodnight, and thanks for listening and watching, and we'll see you guys at the next cast. All right, see you guys.